Hi everyone, I'm Kim Crosby and welcome to my channel. Now before we start the video, please click on the subscribe and the bell so you guys know that I'm coming every week with more videos to help you discover who you are. Little tricks and tips on that discovery. Now today I want to talk about where or how our emotions are generated within ourselves. A lot of the times we think it's emotions ruling our lives. You know, we get that fear, we get that sadness, we get that loneliness, and then we're really clouded. It really takes over our body. But emotions don't come just that simply. It comes from a powerful thought that you believe, okay? And that powerful thought creates a belief. Now, today I'm using I'm weak. I've seen this with many clients. They have this inner belief, I'm weak. And when they get this powerful belief, it really starts clouding. And how? It's because when you believe something, a thought, and all these thoughts that you have, we talked about this in the beginning of the videos, you have a lot of thoughts going through your head. So it's really hard to know which ones are the dominating ones and that are creating havoc within you. Now, why do they create havoc? Well, when you have a thought that you really believe, that you're not questioning, even if I went to you and I told you, look, guys, this isn't true. It's, you know, I can try and give you so many examples why it's not true. But if you believe it, there's nothing I can do. It's only you can change this belief. Now, if you have a belief such as weak, your imagination also plays with that thought. Even if it's in the background, in the subconscious, because you're not following your thoughts, then this weak creates this imagination and there's other thoughts that are created from this one such as and I've seen this before a lot people can crush me so if I'm weak I can be crushed by a confrontation by a comment by my parents behavior so right there if this is the second sentence because there's many sentences around the core belief the imagination starts having a little party in your head because if I can be crushed and you got all these things and images of this type of crushing that you associate, you personally associate with weak, well, then it can give you the emotion, oh boy, I'm really in fear. So this is where the imagination emphasizes the belief, the strong belief, I'm weak. And then these other beliefs really start to color this in a way with your imagination to really give you the cortisol and the adrenaline kicking into your body, and then the emotion really takes hold. Now, if this is truly believed, like very strong, deeply rooted in you, the bigger the imagination you're going to have about the belief. And this is why people don't like going in themselves, because all of this starts going up in their head. So that's why we create defense mechanism. Oh boy, I'm going to disassociate from this. I don't want to look at this. I'm going to go in somewhere else. And off they go and they dismiss it and they repress it. Same thing with projection. They really don't want to feel this. They think this is not pleasant. So they're going to, because they're not aware that this is their belief. So they say, no, you're weak. You're the one causing the problem. They say you're the issue when it's their own issue. Now there's other sentences that can come with weak. I, I don't have control. This I see a lot in every client, this control thing, this illusion that if I have control, I'm going to be okay. But then we're always searching for it. So deep down, if you want that control, you don't, you don't have it because you believe you're this. But it creates this in your imagination. So out of control, it could be about your finances. I never have enough money. Um, I can't control my kids. That's why I'm weak. I can't control... It can just go on and on. So this creates in the imagination again, and then it creates more emotions that can come. So if you have no control, you may feel super sad about it. So again, the weakness is there. So this is what I look for, and this is in the subconscious. These sentences that are created by the imagination, these are within you and sometimes are easier when you're triggered. This is what I want to show you. These may be your easier to find because when your imagination is swirling because you feel, oh God, I got no control, or the last one down here I wrote, I'm alone, oh dear, here we go, and then the panic starts and your body has a physical reaction, an emotional reaction, and then depression comes in. Now people may think that depression just comes in because of an event. No, it's been in you for a while, it's been stirring, it's been sort of slowly emerging through you, and then it happens. Because the weakness belief has been there for many, many, many years. If not, even in my case, I really see this and believe that it can go into past lives. So you had this belief for a while. So it's rooted. That's why it's so deep in the subconscious. 
That's why people have a hard time finding them unless there's a trigger. And then able to identify that trigger, this makes me feel like I'm weak. But a lot of the times people will say these sentences in a session. They'll say, how does, I'll ask, how does it make you feel? Oh, I have no control. Okay, and that makes you feel, oh, I don't like it, I'm sad, or I'm in fear. And I said, well, if you're out of control, this means that I'm what? And then maybe this comes, okay? We're looking for this because this is the belief that creates in your imagination lots of different sentences, and these all create these emotions, okay? And this is what is difficult to feel that no one wants to feel. We block this with our defense mechanisms, okay? But when you're really like in a panic, you go blank, you can't feel anything, it's really difficult. Well, this is why if you can't follow your thoughts, okay, because everything goes blank, this is normal because defense mechanisms are to protect you. But it, it protects you in the wrong way because the belief is constantly re-emerging as a truth that you think is real. So I always tell my clients, okay, since you have so many thoughts, and this is just a few, you can have hundreds of these just for one belief, and this is, can be very difficult to find in the beginning. So if this is too many, oh, my control, I'm alone, I don't know what to do, I can't do anything, I'm really, and then they go on with the whole venting of what they feel, it's difficult to find the belief. So what I do, it's easier to pinpoint an emotion because it's really taking you over. And I would say most of the time when you're triggered, it's usually the same type of emotions that come back again and again. So it's easier to identify those emotions. Fear is hard because if you're in fear, you can't move, you can collapse, you can freeze, you can run, you can start fighting. But you really got to know what is it? What am I feeling and what kind of fear? And if it goes to sadness, Finally, you feel this, the fear, and oh, I feel sad under there. Then it's easier to say, what kind of sadness? That's what I try to find with people. Describe to me what kind of sadness. Now, I think I've given you other examples of people who feel very weak. They have also these symbolisms. I did this in a past video of what kind of weak. And that also gives you more of this part, the imagination. So I would say to somebody, once you find this, well, what kind of weak do you feel? And one told me once, well, I feel like I'm a fragile um, clay doll and I can break very easily. I have no control. And there, there's, there are the other types of sentences that come in. And this is where the imagination really fuels the belief, okay? Really, because this is your fear. So you're fueling it until you have an emotion. Now, I know this is difficult to feel, especially if you've been you know, avoiding feeling for a long time. And if you're older, it's harder because of that baggage that you have. And it really takes practice. When I have clients come in, they think, oh, after three sessions, you'll help me feel, right? I don't decide that. It's about you. It's your journey to feel it. I start finding all of these things, but at home, it's really where the real, real work starts, okay? So I just want people to understand that your imagination is key hand in hand with belief systems because it's been there for a while. It had time to stir in you, had time to create other types of imagination sentences that can really freak you out. And when you have these two coming together, then the body reacts. It's only reacting to something that's in there, but because you're not conscious of it, that it's not in your subconscious. 95% is in the subconscious. You don't know most of what's going on here. You know this, because this makes your quality of life really bad, but this is difficult, okay? So imagination really fuels also our emo emotions, and they also ricochet, and like a domino effect. If I, don't, if I feel that people can crush me very easily because I'm afraid of con confrontation and I get fear, right away it starts going, oh, there's the next one is sadness, and then you get that other one coming in, and then you get the depression because it's been so long you've been holding it in you. So guys, I hope this was helpful. Please write your comments or questions. Keep doing well, learning who you are. It's, it's not easy. Keep going though, because it takes time, but when you discover it, boy, it changes everything around you. You take care.